now this is a story about a girl who chose to obey and do the will of the Lord. And now, even though it took some wrong turns and some upside down moments, the spear within her kept her moving her forward. Now, I don't know much about poetry, but I hope you stick around to know more about my story. Oh, yeah. God bless. Ooh, 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 ooh. Jesus is rocks. Jesus is rocks. Oh yeah, oh yeah, stick around and know more about my story. Oh yeah. God bless, love you, keep on smiling, stay positive. Jesus loves you, so do I. Oh yeah, oh yeah. sitting around sleep I think I only got up once so that's good um I don't know what's all gonna happen today really <laughs> things are kind of up in the air right now <clears throat> uh, let's see I'm gonna try to be positive today hopefully <laughs> um, I'm not feeling the greatest so uh, physically that is, um, so I'm in pain, but other than that, I am doing alright, um, try to be in good spirit, apologize if I don't, oh, excuse me, hmm. tired as per usual, but anyway, I already ate breakfast, came back upstairs, I still gotta clean the bathroom, I didn't do that yesterday, so I gotta do that today, at some point. Um, yeah, um, I don't know much to say, because I'm just, I'm looking tired, I am tired, but it is everybody's favorite time of the vlog, which is bubble time, so let's get started. So we're in Genesis, chapter 31. Jacob flees from Laban. But Jacob soon learned the blonde sons were grumbling about him. Jacob has robbed our father of everything. They said he has gained all of his wealth at our father's expense. And Jacob began to notice a change in Laban's attitude toward him. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land your father and grandfather and to your relatives there, and I will be with you. So Jacob <clears throat> called Rachel and Leah out to the field where he was watching his flock. He said to them, I have no... Notice that your father's attitude toward me has changed, but the God of my father has been with me. You know how hard I have worked for your father, but he has cheated me, changing my wages ten times, but, the, but God has not allowed him to do me any harm. For if he said, the speckled animals will be your wages, the whole flock began to produce speckled young. And then he changed his mind and said, the striped animals will be your wages. Then the whole flock produced striped young. In this way, God is taking your father's animals and giving them to me. One time during the mating season, I had a dream of and saw the male goats mating with the females with streaks speckled and spotted. Then in my dream, the angel of God said to me, Jacob, and I replied, yes, here I am. The angel said, look up and you will see that only the streaks speckled and spotted males are mating with the females of your flock. For I have seen how Laban has treated you. I am the God who appeared to you at Bethel, the place where you have pointed the pillar of stone and made your vow to me. Now get ready and leave this country and return to the land of your birth. <coughs> Excuse me. <sighs> Rachel and Leah responded, That's fine with us. We won't inherit any of our father's wealth anyway. He has reduced our rights to those of foreign women, and after he sold us, he wasted the money you paid him for us. All the wealth God has given you from the, our father legally belongs to us and our children. So go ahead and do whatever God has told you. So Jacob 
put his wives and children on camels, and he drove all of his livestock in front of him. He packed the belongings he had required in Paddan Aram and set out for the land of Canaan where his father Isaac lived. At the time they left, Laban was some distance away, shearing his sheep. Rachel stole her father's household idol and stole them and took them with her. Bad idea, Rachel. Jacob outwitted Laban the Ar Araman, for they for they set out secretly and never told Laban where they were leaving. They were leaving, so Jacob took all of his possessions with him and crossed the Ifrit's river, heading for the hill country of Gil Gilead, or Gilead. Laban pursues Jacob. Three days later, Laban has was told that Jacob had fled, so he gathered a group of his relatives and set out in hot pursuit. He caught up with Jacob seven days later in the hill country of Gilead. But the previous night, God had appeared to Laban the Amorian in a dream and told him, I'm warning you, leave Jacob alone. Laban caught up with Jacob as he was camped in the hill country of Gilead and set up his camp not far from Jacob's. What do you mean by stealing away like this? Laban demanded. How dare you drag my daughters away like prisoners of war? Why did you slip away secretly? Why did you steal away? And why didn't you say you wanted to leave? I would have given you a farewell feast with this singer was singing in music accompanied by tambourines and harps. Why didn't you let me kiss my daughters and grandchildren and tell them goodbye? You have acted very foolishly. I could destroy you, but the God of your father appeared to me last night and warned me, leave Jacob alone. I can understand your feeling that you must go in your intense longing for your father's home, but why have you stolen my gods? I rushed away because I was afraid, Jacob answered. I thought you would take your daughters from me by force. But as for your, but as far as your gods, I see if, if you can find them and let the person who has taken them die. And if you find any anything else that belongs to you, identify it before all these relatives of ours, and I'll give it back. But Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen the household idols. Oof. <clears throat> Excuse me. Laban went first into Jacob's tent to search there, then into Leah's, and then the tents of the two servant wives, but he found nothing. Finally, he went into Rachel's tent, but Rachel had taken the household idols and hidden them in her camel saddle, and now she was sitting on them. When Laban had thoroughly searched her tent without finding them, she said to her father, Please, sir, forgive me if I don't get up for you. I'm having my monthly period. So Laban continued to... <laughs> That's an excuse. So Laban continued his search, but he could not find the household idols. Then Jacob became very angry, and he challenged Laban. What's my crime? he demanded. What have I done wrong to make you chase after me as though I were a criminal? You have rummaged through everything I own. Now show me what you found that belongs to you. Set it out here in front of us before our relatives for all to see. Let them judge between us. For twenty years I have been with you, caring for your flocks. And all that time your sheep and goats never miscarried. And all those years I never used a single ram of your yours for food. And if any were attacked and killed by wild animals, I never showed you the carcass and asked you to reduce the count of your flock. No, I took the loss myself. You made me pay for your every stolen animal, whether it was taken at broad daylight or in the dark, dark of night. I worked for you through the scorching heat of the day and through cold and sleepless nights. Yes, for 20 years I slaved in your house. I worked for 14 years earning your two daughters, and then six more years for your flock, and you changed my wages ten times. In fact, if the God of my father had not been on my side, the God of Abraham and the fearsome God of Isaac, you would have sent me away empty-handed. God has seen your abuse in my hard work. That is why he appeared to you last night and rebuked you. A little sidebar called the diligence payoff. Jacob had the habit of doing more than was expected of him. When his flocks were attacked, he took the losses rather than splitting them with Laban. He worked e hard even after several pay cuts. His diligence eventually paid off. His flocks began to multiply. Diligence, one, pleases God, two, earns recognition and advancement. 3. Enhances your reputation. 4. Builds others' confidence in you. 5. Gives you more experience and knowledge. And 6. It develops your spiritual maturity. 
Do you have the diligence habit? <clears throat> Jacob's treaty with Laban. When Laban replied to Jacob, These women are my daughters, these children are my grandchildren, and these flocks are my flocks. In fact, everything you see is mine. But what can I do now about my daughters and their children? So come, let's make a covenant, you and I, and I will be your witness to our commitment. And it will be a witness. So Jacob took a stone and set it up on a monument. Then he told his family members, Gather some stones. So they gathered stones and piled them in a heap. And Jacob and Laban sat down beside the pile of stones to eat a covenant meal. To commemorate the event, Laban called the place, oh, here it goes, Jegar Shahadathul? I don't know. Which means witness pile in Ar Aramaic. I don't know how to say that. Jacob called it Galilee, which means witness pile in Hebrew. Well, that was a little bit easier to say in Hebrew than Arabic, but okay. Then Laban declared, This pile of stones will stand as a witness to remind us the covenant we made today. This explains why it is called Gelid, witness pile, but it is also called Mispath, which means watchtower. For Laban said, May the Lord keep watch between us to make sure that we keep the covenant when we are out on each other's sight. If you mistreat my daughters or if you marry otherwise, God will say it even if no one else does. He is witness to this covenant between us. See this pile of stones, Laban continued, and see this monument I have set between us. They stand between us as witnesses of our vows. I will never pass this pile of stones to harm you, and you must never pass these stones of this monument to harm me. I call on the God of our ancestor, God of your grandfather Abraham, and the God of my grandfather Nahor, to serve as judge between us. Be back. Okay, I'm back. It might have been a split second to you when I edit this, but for me it's been like over an hour. <laughs> Whew. So, not only was my battery dying when I turned this off, but I went outside and helped Ricky and Zachary. We all power washed the front porch, which was overdue. It's disgusting. So we took care of that, and it was pretty warm outside. The humidity is just horrendous. Even though there's a cool, slight breeze, it's just horrendous, so I'm sweaty. Lovely, right? Now I can remember where I left off. <laughs> okay, I was... Where was I? be repeating myself but that's okay see this pile of stones leblon continued and we see this monument i have set between us they stand between us as witnesses of our vows i will never pass this pile of stones to harm you and you must never pass these stones or this monument to harm me i call on the god of our ancestors the god of our your grandfather abraham and the grandfather and the god of my grandfather nahor to serve as a judge between us so jacob took an oath before the fearsome god of his father isaac to respect the boundary line. Then Jacob offered a sacrifice to God there on the mountain and invited everyone to a covenant feast. After they had eaten, they spent the night on the mountain. Laban got up early the next morning and he kissed his grandchildren and his daughters and blessed them and he left and returned home. I only had a few sentences left of that chapter, but that is chapter 31. We'll be getting into 32 next time. So thank you, Lord, as you're always for your living, breathing word. And I'm going to go on ahead, go ahead, and read the collective journey. Um, as I said before, last night we had Bible study, and it was really good. We do have a new assignment with this coming up chapter. Um, it's going to be interesting, to say the least. So let's go ahead and read, shall we? This is part two of chapter... What chapter is this? Five? Yeah, part two of chapter five. Okay. Communion, the power of your story. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was 
the spring that is beside the road to shore. And he said, Hagar, slave Asari, where have you come from and where are you going? Genesis chapter 16, verses 7 through 8. Communion is the second part of the inner movement. The practice of the communion sacrament brings a powerful analogy to know we can embrace the power of our story as seen through, seen through God's story, his death, burial, and resurrection. Together, we will consider the practices of remembering, forgiveness, and gratitude. As we begin this foundational chapter, consider the question, how is it with your story? To understand and answer this question, all four of the living it out rhythms would be wrapped around one activity, creating a personal story map. Which, not gonna lie, you gotta go back to the very beginning of your childhood and basically write down, I don't know if all you have to write down all the memories or at least some of them, I guess the significant parts of it, which is going to be hard for me because my memory sucks. Yes, part of my French, but it does. It really does. I don't recall much of anything, so I'm going to try my very best, but I don't think I'm going to do very well with this. It's going to be interesting. As you read the instructions carefully and begin working on the project, allow the Holy Spirit to go with you as you reflect on your life journey. Family of origin, culture, successes, failures, faith experience, sources of joy and pain, and emotional and spiritual growth. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be a bumpy road. <laughs> Gotta put our seatbelts on, people. When I contemplate my, pers my personal story map, I found difficult places and wounds that needed God's grace. But I also found some gratitude moments as I reflected on the goodness of love, the goodness of God. As you create your personal story map, the story of Hagar in Genesis will illustrate the meaning of the two questions. Where did you come from? Where are you going? Hagar knew from where she had come. I'm running away from my mistress, sorry, but God showed her where she was going. Leading with an open heart requires careful reflection on knowing where you came from, knowing where you stand, and knowing where you want to go as you take others with you. As leaders, awareness of how our personal and family culture shaped us remains paramount, paramount for leading from a healthy and whole heart. As you are willing to work through these questions with an open heart, God will use you to transform the culture where you lead. I love the book, A Work of Heart, Understanding How God Shapes Spiritual Leaders by Reggie McNeil. He writes, fortunately, many women and men provide real spiritual leadership. These leaders are masterpieces and too short a supply. Where they are generally genuine works of heart, they don't develop overnight. Though it may seem very... Let me read that again. They don't develop overnight. Though it might seem they appear out of nowhere, they always come from somewhere, the heart of God. They are careful, crafted, faithfully shaped. The chapter, Culture Meaning the World, and that same book provides an excellent reminder on how followers replicate the culture of their leader, which is why it remains important to reflect on our story and lead from the heart of God. The communion emblems re represent forgiveness, healing, and health. Partaking of the bread reminds participants that because his body was broken, believers can live in health and healing. The cup represents his shed blood and serves as a reminder that we live in forgiveness. As you continued in the communion, the power of your story, foundation, be encouraged to reimagine holiness not through the lens of perfectionism, but through the lens of our utter oneness with God. The table of the Lord offers a way to come back to that place and remember, examine, and ensure that one story is good. Remembering and forgiving enable participants to pray generously and celebrate in gratitude. Communion assessment. These are the things we have to do, so it's going to be interesting. And you guys can participate too if you want use one we need to use memories from birth until present to complete the exercise of a personal story map so we have to do that from boom boom which is gonna be interesting because i can't remember much of anything but you guys probably have a better memory than i do so who knows 
Allow the Holy Spirit to bring revelation to specific memories. Yes, I'm going to have to pray about this. <laughs> Revealing both unhealthy wounds and one that brings gratitude. Ooh, we're going to have to get into the deep parts of our lives that we probably would have rather erased. But. Okay, so that's part one. Part two, we need to walk through healing and forgiveness from the memories revealed in the personal story map. I will say a lot of the bad memories in my life I have actually forgiven. I have forgiven a lot of people in my life. So I feel like, I mean, yeah, as I've grown close to the Lord, I have allowed a lot of stuff just to roll off my back like rain and just ask God. I'm not saying it hasn't hurt me or disappoint myself, disappointed me when people hurt me. But at the same time, I've learned to forgive others pretty much right away because it's not good to harp on hurt wounds and just yeah it's a bitter it's not good to have bitterness in our hearts so and to find the gratitude with that with bringing the positive views how you can be a witness of how you basically how God has allowed you to overcome that and see a positive light out of all those positive negative things because there's always a positive to every negative if you haven't known that if you don't know that already so so that's what we need to do walk through healing forgiveness from the memories revealed in our personal story map and three start a gratitude journal so basically puts jot some things down that we are grateful for which I tend to do not necessarily write them down but I do sometimes I do and other times I have just said it over and over in my head so I'm grateful for a lot of things. So that's going to be interesting. That's a challenge. I need to figure out. I need to ask the Holy Spirit to help me in this situation. Because I don't remember much. Or I'll just try my best I can apparently. And then it shows you this. Probably can't see it. That shows you what you're supposed to do. Basically it's just all the same thing. But different assessments. And the SOFL you. It's. You're supposed to write your personal story map. Create a personal story map of your life from birth to present. You can use a timeline format on paper or another creative way. It is important to include main events, but also allow the Holy Spirit to help you remember things that may seem insignificant. This project is for your eyes only. We can discuss in the one-on-one -on -one mentoring session together if you like, but that is up to you. Mindful you... I suggest you take a spiritual prayer retreat four to eight hours to compile the personal story map. If this is not possible, at least set aside two hour time intervals to give attention to this. Also consider your family of origin. What kind of people raised you? Were they educated, working class, or did they struggle with finances? And this, and this, no, let me get the, let me get this. Ethnicity, yes, I think that's right. If it's just little, and this is and this is ethnicity or something like that. It's close enough. Sorry if I'm pronouncing. I know I'm doing that wrong. My mouth's not formenting. City or country. Authenticity, authenticity. Basically, what is your origin of where you came from? Parents divorced, grandparents, friends schools did you move around a lot don't forget to include your spiritual journey salvation experience calling other significant memories okay your person okay so the heartful view play close attention to the joy and pain revealed while you're compiling your story map release shame unforgiveness hurts and allow the holy spirit to heal your story how this affect you Journal and pray over your discoveries, pausing for areas in need of healing. Pay particular, particular attention to memories that bring you joy or pain. The creative you. As you pray about forgiveness or enjoy a time of gratitude, find a picture of you or a family that has a particular memory attached and thank God for all that he has brought you through. Start a gratitude journal. So yes, that is what we have to do and it's going to be interesting for me personally um 
I'm sure the other ladies in our uh, class are going to have a hard time with that too. I'm sure I'm not the only one that's going to have a hard time remembering things or want to remember things because some people have gone through a lot. So, um, that is our challenge and if you want to join in, you're more than welcome to. So, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to get into currently because I have no idea what to do next. Oh, I was supposed to clean the bathroom. <laughs> I think if Zachary's done out of the shower, I'll probably go deal with that. And um, yeah, I'm not sure what else. We'll see. We'll say. Hey, it's the evening. Good evening, by the way. I <laughs> hope you guys had a great day so far. My day has been okay. Um, can't really complain much, honestly. Nothing really happened other than this morning. I'm soaking my feet right now. Apparently the soaker thing is, even though it's plugged in, it's dead for some odd reason. I guess there's a short somewhere or something broke. I don't know. It doesn't make bubbles anymore. What a shame. I mean, I can still soak my feet if that part still works. But this thing's old. Probably should get rid of it and get a new one, but we'll see. I'll try it out again see if it's if it continues to still not work, then we'll get a new one. But for now, it'll do. It'll do. I could still soak my feet in it. Um, yeah, we ate dinner. Uh, we had chicken, um, potatoes, like honey potatoes. Um, what else did we have? Um, green beans, peas. I was going to say lima beans. No, they're not lima beans. They're some kind of beans. There's big white looking beans. Anyway, Ricky really likes them, so I fed, I put those in the microwave for him. I can't think of what they are. Anyway, he likes them, so I got them. Um, mac and cheese and jasmine rice. I was contemplating making biscuits, but I was like, that's a lot of starch. We already have a lot of starch. Oh, the potatoes, mac and cheese, and rice. That's a lot of starch, so no. Decided not to. I vetoed that one. Um, let's see. So after I cleaned all the kitchen up, came upstairs, got my outfit ready, got soaking my feet. So this is what that's happening right now. That's the update. Um... So, um, the next, um, I don't know if I'm going to be filming Monday. I think I'm working Monday, so I won't be filming then. I don't know if I'm, I think I'm working also Friday, so I probably won't keep you filming until next Saturday. But anyway, so I'm at the end of August, and September is coming around the corner, so we'll be, um, Saying hello to September and fall is just around the corner, y'all. I can't wait. Yes. So, just like last year, I'll probably do my little funny things about fall. Like, hey, sweater weather or whatever type of, um, here are my little scarecrows or something like that, like I did last year. So, I'll probably do that this year as well because that was fun, honestly. That really was. I figured out I'll do that again. Um, so yeah just gotta edit this video and then I guess I'll get to video or whatever anyway I hope you guys enjoyed as always keep on smiling stay positive I love you guys Jesus loves you too and I'll see you guys next time bye